Hello everyone, and welcome back to Searching the Far Seas with the Far Sea Tribe, who is about to welcome in the first child of our absolutely stunning healer, Jay. Just look at him! Look at him with those gorgeous tail feathers and that fantastic purr snout and those double nibble berry picking fingers. I just love everything about him. I am so excited that he is also our very first peacock tail nicheling. And as he has been carrying out his duty as a healing nicheling, he wandered away from the healing tree where his mentor Birch is following the sixth sense that he has as a seer in order to try to provide some lessons to all of the person out nichelings and how they can use their powers to heal the others of the tribe. Our experiment can continues with Raisin, the twin sister of Birch, who while she has not regained all of the life that she has already lost from the damage done by the mysterious illness that plagues her, which has to do with being doubled up immunity, unfortunately, we have seemed to have stalled her illness at least, so she is not drifting off into death as soon as we thought she would, uh, and rest in peace to her brother Cuckoo, whose bones she's currently dancing upon. But I'm sure everyone mourns in their own way. But we are carrying on with Jay having gone down to heal into the nest little Soul and bring him back to the healing tree after Soul was born as a sickly baby nicheling displaying many of the same symptoms that Birch's siblings had when they were babies. So we sent Jay down there to heal the baby as quickly as we could and invite him back up to the healing tree so we could monitor him. Very excitingly, he has only lost two days of his life from the illness that he has. So as long as he remains by the side of our healers, we may be on to something. And we may be getting ready to begin a new tradition of always having a healer next to a mother on the nest. Because if we can heal a sickly baby like the day it's born, I wonder if we can prevent almost any damage from ever being done to that little one. So speaking of babies, Jay was approached by the lovely dove who wiggled out of the shadows after following Jay and his magnificent tail through the grasses. And she approached him daintily, lightly, and whispered words of love. And while he has a duty to carry on at the healing tree, he has left her with one child. So I'm really hoping that they're gonna have a great kid, but we have one other nicheling on the nest way out here in the wild where Raven actually left the tribe and went into the wilds in search of just something. She wasn't quite sure what, but it was some deeper fulfillment and she met Vanduk, who we really haven't given a new name to just yet, uh, but he's quite the big boy. He has a big body so that actually prevents him from being able to fly very well and he also has a stinky tail, which I think Raven would find quite attractive. So she is currently on a nest as well. So let's go ahead and see what the new babies are going to look like. And Oh, she's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Hello, gorgeous. So this is actually not an albino nicheling. This is just a white bodied nicheling with recessive purr snout and recessive antenna. She is healthy with normal blood clotting, D and B immunity, pretty high fertility. And if she had been born a boy, she would have had a peacock tail. So what a find actually. She's very lovely. She has one of her father's nimble fingers and one of her mother's uh, beautiful paws. And she actually fits her mother's name of dove even better. Um, oh man, I, I kind of like, what do I name her? So Jay and Dove had a baby. Um, I think I'm going to name her, I kind of want to name her Owl, like something owl related, uh, because let's see, Snow Owl, um, hmm, they haven't seen snow yet, so it would feel a little bit weird to give her a name related to snow when they have not yet seen snow. And you know, dang it, I just saw Okay, this is gonna seem a little odd, but actually, as you guys know, I have been on vacation with my beloved Chips this month, and we were hiking in the mountains recently and saw an albino crow. It was flying in a flock of three crows, two black crows and one albino crow. It was absolutely beautiful, the only albino crow I've ever seen in the wild. So we're going to actually name this little one Crow. 
And that's going to seem very odd because she is not a black nicheling and she is not a beaked nicheling and she is not a winged nicheling. But she reminds me of that here. We'll actually give her two, uh, Cra-o, maybe? Cre-o? Cre we'll just go with straight up crow because her mother's dove, her father's jay, and although she looks nothing like a crow, I did see an albino crow. And so that'll kind of be based off of that special crow that I saw. <gasps> and she has no tail! I don't know why, but that's just so cute to me when they have no tail. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. But all right, so we have one baby board and that's actually really cool. So we might actually let them have a, another baby in just a minute, but let's check in on our sickly ones. It appears that Soul, ooh, he has lost another day actually. So unfortunately he has indeed lost three days worth of damage instead of just two. So it doesn't seem like the the purring heals alone are enough to reduce the damage that can happen when a nicheling becomes this ill. So perhaps with all of the research that we actually have Birch doing over here, Birch is trying to find if there's a healthier lifestyle he can present to the tribe, to the Pharisees. He has memories passed down to him from the lore of the tribe of all of these mysterious sticky fruits and things like that. They discovered the cocoa nuts on this island after all. But I think Birch may be beginning to think, what if there is something out there, something more we can find? Once upon a time, we ate from the roots beneath our feet and we hardly do that anymore. We knew not of the cocoa nuts and their existence until we stepped foot on this land. Does the mysterious sticky fruit exist elsewhere? Could it help those who fall ill? I believe Birch is truly becoming a researcher of how to best take care of the health of the nichelings. So perhaps we We'll go searching for some healing fruit. With the combination of our purse now and healing fruit, we might be able to reverse the damage that is going to take his sister's life tomorrow. Oh dear. I'm so sorry, Birch. Now you're going to lose Raisin too. Oh, this is just so sad. Oh my goodness. It's so sad. All right. Well, let's carry on. We're going to have little Soul continue his way up there. We're also going to have uh, Kunut continue his way over here because he's just ready to go exploring. He has been kind of a disciple of Tata for quite a while. And Tata seems to be having a good time <laughs> just trying to contend with these bunnies. We also have Zoyce over here who we might bring up. We'll figure out what to do with her. I don't think she has a good mate anywhere in particular on the island yet. And she is another seer after all, since she was born with the antenna. And her purpose is to dig up roots, yes, like that. And hopefully unlock digging paw for us. Also, watch out, Holly, you have once again been visited by these rabbits, these rabbles who are trying to steal the berries that we need to feed those who come to the healing tree. So we will chase them away. Uh, I don't think everybody's just really good at picking berries and not so good at fighting off all these bundles. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of moles around here too. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. And Simoth does not fight the bundles since the bundles often lead her to where she needs to go to discover new berry bushes like so. Samoth believes that her purpose in life as a wanderer, as one who is actually blessed with the ability to sense and smell out where the berry bushes are hiding in the wild, is to use her six sincere powers, <laughs> try to say that five times fast, uh, in order to find all of the berry bushes on this land. And I wonder if perhaps she will also find companionship with Goose over here, who would love to have a mate of his own and is quite proud to take care of these berry bushes. We will have to see. All right, meanwhile over here, Chrissy has been having fun splashing in the waters and trying to do a little bit of uh, swimming. Apparently she cannot swim in the water right now, so Maybe they're in to help them breathe, which is not what's happening, but we can pretend. Who knows? I can just imagine them like twitching above above the uh, the water there. But Crumble, while he is searching out all of the mysterious coconut trees, is also finding himself uh, kind of unlocking some of the fishing genes, I think. Do we have fishing tail unlocked yet? 
Uh, if not, ooh, Tailfin? You know, we had Tailfin unlocked on the last island, too. There was something wonky about one of those updates, so we definitely had some things unlocked that are no longer with us. Um, where's Fishing Tail? Yeah, well, who knows? Crumble may not be able to unlock Fishing Tail in his lifetime, but he is searching out those cocoa nuts. All right, so what to do on this half of the island? Uh, let's, let's start with... Solus. So let's see. Oh my gosh, there's a ton of fish. So we can actually just go ahead and feast upon the fish for a minute. Oh my gosh, there's so many fish. Okay, come on, Sunry. You had your chance at like gathering up bunnels and you have unlocked the ram horn. So I think you and your family are going to become really good fishers for a minute because oh no, you're under a coconut tree. <gasps> she got so excited to be fishing with her daughter, Sandri. I really wanted her to be able to have one more child. Oh, that's going to be really close there. Uh, all right. And then over here, we have leader Lynn constantly searching and trying to find more strategic locations in the forest for his tribe, followed by Ross Star, his assistant uh, and best friend. Honestly, I think these two are super duper 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 close. Uh, but Ross Star follows behind him. Ross Star, you have E and B immunity. Why? Everybody shares so much immunity. They're so close. And I think that Dove will step over here to gather some of the food that Ross Star left for her and say a fond goodbye for now to Jay, who must carry on. He will leave behind some of these delicious, delicious berries, and he must carry on to guide the little one safely. Oh dear. Get away, Bunnel! <laughs> I swear, oh my gosh. Uh, but he must guide the young soul safely to the healing tree. So we'll have to bring him back over. Raisin is unfortunately going to pass away, so these are her final moments with her brother. And then Sosis and Kyo are in charge of helping out with the protection of this area. So these two have their paws full, trying to make sure that the bundles do not eat all of the food before they can give it to those who come to the healing tree. And finally, Birch will offer his sister what he can. And unfortunately, he must say goodbye to his twin sister. Who, who he felt called by the seers, called by that sixth sense within him that gives him just a little bit of insight to trying to help heal. And I do think that she lived longer than she would have without his help, but the damage was definitely done by the mysterious illness that she carried. So I'm really, really gonna miss her. Oh, and we had a baby over here. Oh, so sorry, Raven. That's what you get for living in the backwoods, okay? <laughs> We have a little baby girl with a beak, and she is indeed short-sighted. She has B and F immunity. Thank you so much, Von Duke. I highly appreciate that. Um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and name her. Uh, let's name her maybe... Hmm. I want to give her another name that's like after a bird. Because she does have a beak, and she's only our second ever beaked nicheling. So I'm going to go ahead and name her... Uh, Warla. Warla after warblers. Um, well, let's see. Warbler is actually a really fascinating type of bird that I have seen a ton of around here. But no, let's name her Junko. Junko. There we go. After the beautiful Junkos that I have actually seen. Junkos, even. That I have actually seen all over the place lately. So we have little Junko. She finally has a beak. That's fantastic because it will very much help us with digging. And she can still eat berries, which is very, very useful. She also has a smaller body and that very important F immunity. Oh my goodness. That's a very, very important trait. Uh, all right. We'll have her mother Raven step to the side. There's a ton of food around here that Raven can actually gather and Von Duke can help kind of clear the area a little bit because they do sort of live just straight up in the wilds right now. Meanwhile, Tuft can work his way through the water. He's not very good or fast at it, but he found a whole bunch of nuts that he can call his own. So congratulations, everyone. All right, any, I don't think I have any pregnant females on the nest. <gasps> oh no, but I totally forgot. Oh, Raisin. Raisin. Oh, Raisin. That hurts more than I, I thought it would. Oh, jeez. Oh, Birch. Oh, Birch, and you're not even halfway through your life. <laughs> That's so sad. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Can I even find like a mate for you? Be an F immunity. There isn't even a good mate for him yet. Oh gracious me. Like what about B and A? Everybody's got B immunity. Oh my gosh. D and B. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to figure this out. Okay, so Birch is definitely going to be in mourning right now because he did just lose his last family member. And I think that would be something very hard to cope with, very difficult to deal with. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think that anybody is like not as related as to him as they need to be in order to have a child. C and D. Oh my gosh, <gasps> Samoth! Samoth was the perfect one all that time ago. That's right, Samoth. This tragedy may have to call you back to his side. We will have to see. We will have to see. I, I feel like Birch really needs to feel like he has family around him right now. But he does have all of the healers who have kind of become his children in a way. Who he can guide and lead as they try to protect this tribe. So Birch, I am, I am so sorry about your loss. We'll have everybody, everybody try to do their best to help. I think everyone will kind of clean things up. We may send Holly over. Come on, Holly. We'll send her over and she can stand by Birch's side and exchange nuts. Uh, there we go. And there we go. And then Keo can come over and she can help with kind of just clearing some of the grass and trying to make things nice. We'll have Sios come over and help out with gathering up the nuts so everybody has plenty of food. Oh my goodness. And we'll bring little soul little soul of the sickly can come over and we will kind of have him wait here at the entrance until the time is right to bring him here but we will have jay perform another healing on him we will have walnut or kunut excuse me rest in peace walnut come over and get that bundle because it's causing me problems and we will have jay move so that he does not become sick there we go. And then we will have Kunut come over and show this beautiful fancy tail off. And I have to admit, I truly think that any female not related to him immediately would find this irresistible. These are all his half-sisters, now that I remember correctly. So, um, yeah, they might find him pretty resistible. But Samoth may come over and find love, because there's plenty of males to go around all of a sudden. So A and B immunity, F and B... Cursors. We need more. We need more nichelings. If only there was a, a trunk on this island so that I could call for another wanderer, but there is not. So let's carry on. We have got so many of the bunnels causing issues over here. Rabbles, excuse me. I just think it's more fun to call them bunnels because they're bunnies. And then we'll clear this away. Uh, right over here, Lynn has discovered a, another berry bush and he's going to carry on. Uh, oh, was that a bundle? Or a rabble. See, I did it again, but I just find them more fun to call bundles. Uh, all right, we'll gather up this. Hmm. I could have sworn there was one right next to us, but I don't see it. All right, we'll do more exploring in a second. All right, meanwhile, down here at Sound 3. Oh, get out of the way. Get out of the way, Sundry. All right, Sundry's going to come over, and I think that she. Oh, she and Kulu are on their final moments. No! Oh, this is so sad. Okay, Sundry's gonna go ahead and make herself comfortable. And we're gonna have Sandry pop up so that she can kind of watch over her mother and father. But Kulo and Sundry have reached the end of their life. And Sandry is, Sandry is here to watch over any child born, her youngest sibling, Soul having gone to the healing tree. And we'll have to see what happens with them. Tata, how you doing? C and D immunity? Are you gonna, Tata, are you gonna tell me? Oh no. Uh, well, hang on. C and D, C and D, A and B, A and B. Holly and Tata actually make a good couple. So, unfortunately, in a way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start moving Tata up there because we do have to play it a little bit more carefully with the immunity genes, I think. Especially now that the nichelings are starting to cotton on that there's a way that this mysterious illness spreads about. All right, Lindry is gonna clear out this area. Rothstar will help. Those two are the closest of close friends, I think. We'll go ahead. Tuft is going to continue his A and E immunity. Hey now. Hey now. A and B. D and B. A and E. D and B. A and E. Hello. Turn around, Tuft. 
<laughs> You're about face, my boy. I found someone for you. All right, Junko is going to scooch over and Von Duke will watch over her very carefully. We will go ahead and let Raven step into the nest, become nice and cozy. Von Duke is going to have to defend their berry bush from onslaughts. Let's see. And Samoth, it is time for you to emerge from the wild, my dear. You have found all of the berry bushes that can be found here, and I do believe it is time for you to have a mate of your own. Uh, I do not believe Goose is that mate because he actually shares immunity genes with you, but I do believe Goose can continue to farm his little area out here quite happily. And I guess, honestly, Kunut, you're not the best mate, but I could see Kyo falling for you. So we'll have Kunut continue his fancy pantsy wanderings over this direction. Oh yeah, and then Crumble. Crumble, you've been out at sea for quite a while, inadvertently becoming a really, really good, uh, really good fisher. I don't think this is what Crumble thought he was going to have done with his life, but there's a ton of fish over here, so we're not going to let him go to waste. All right, so all that is taken care of and Dove is getting ready to have her second child from uh, from our wonderful Jay. So let's go ahead and see what that one looks like. And we can also see what Dove's sister Raven has as well. <gasps> Purse Newt! We have Purse Newt! Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, that kind of changes things a little bit. D and C immunity, what? Okay, ooh, and she's got recessive beak and she's got the female peacock tail. Oh my goodness. Actually, she's perfect. She is literally perfect for Kunut. Okay, what are we gonna name her? She's kind of like a little raspberry or strawberry, but we've had so many raspberry or strawberry nichelings. So she is Dove and J J Jay's child. So maybe, um, Day. We'll name her Day. We'll say that she has a bright, happy smile and a purr that makes one feel as warm as if they were surrounded by the bright daylight. And actually, I just realized, double A immunity, Keo and Soul are a good couple. Tough, turn around again, my boy. <laughs> turn around yet again. You, you are more of a wanderer after all. <gasps> and we had twins. Twins, my friends! We have twin males, yes, who happen to have D and I immunity. It's the first set of identical twins that we have had in this tribe. Raven, clear the way with pride, my dear, because you have just introduced quite the interesting little twist. And we're getting a little bit high on population. Urgh, get the panel, get the panel. A little bit high on population, uh, considering how many, how many, like, not really actively gathering food nichelings we have. But we'll carry on, my friends. I think we're doing quite well. Oh, and we had one more baby born. And who do we have here? Little Kuta with A and K immunity, which may actually prove to be very useful. And he unfortunately did not gain any of his mother's special mutations of a scorpion tail or ram horns that she really wanted to pass on, but he has great eyesight and he's healthy and he has that K immunity gene that I'm sure we could definitely use elsewhere. So, all right, guys. <laughs> We had quite a bit go on today, and I am very, very sad because Birch did lose his beloved sister. But I'm hoping somewhere out there will be someone who can help him fill his, his heart a little bit. Perhaps it will be in the satisfaction of taking care of the healing tree and learning the lessons of how nichelings can thrive and become not only full off of the food of the land, but gain better health from the food of the land as well. And, well, maybe having Soul around and seeing that he only takes, like, a little bit of sickness now and then, rather than so much sickness every day, will be a shining example to the entire tribe of the powers of purrs, and also the importance of having a healer right next to a nesting mother. So, we'll have to see what to do with our identical twins. <laughs> And what other mysterious adventures and hopefully very fun new babies we will see next time. So I'll see you all then. Bye-bye.